Good morning, everyone. This is Dawn McCaw. I am the CRC career liaison to, or career coach, to the science students. And so today we uh, have another episode of Science Chat and my guest will be coming on in a second. I just need to invite her. Oh, let's and um, so yeah, so I'm very excited to have her. And let's see. Good morning, Christina. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to give you a brief introduction, and then we'll, we'll start off. Okay. okay. So Christina Cassano is a 2015 alumna, and she studied, she has a BS in biochemistry from here, of course. And then Christina, we, uh, oh, and, and currently is a veterinarian, a DVM at New Paltz Animal Hospital. I just want to add that after Christina and I set this up, I decided I needed a new veterinarian for my precious Lexi cat. And so I, I took her in to see Dr. Cassano, and we are just so pleased. So thank you, well, Christina, on a thank you. personal level, <laughs> a professional level, as well as being on our chat. So um, could, I do want to hear a little bit if you could share with students about uh, veterinary school and vet school and, you know, maybe the process. Um, and then we can talk about maybe your career journey so far okay. like after you graduated. Okay, gotcha. Um, so I'll also start off a little bit more um, background. I was a transfer student to New Paltz. Great. So I came in junior year. I had started off at SUNY Orange. And both schools were fantastic. They both great, gave me a great foundation for vet school. I think that the curriculum is challenging and you have really great professors at both schools. I think the SUNY program is really awesome for like a, you know, a competitive education that is reasonable that, you know, you can afford. So after New Paltz, um, I went to Colorado State University. And when I was in New Paltz, I think probably maybe my my first year, my junior year there, probably going into senior year, I started an application for vet school. It's a really long application, um, and you have to you have to go through like a lot of um, a lot of writing about your experiences and your schooling, and it takes a really long time. So that's something you're interested in. Get started early. Um, you also do have to take, some of the schools now aren't requiring it, but I took the GRE to get into vet school. I know some schools are getting rid of that, but that was something that I took twice because I'm not very good at standardized tests. So keep that in mind. You might have to take something like that. But um, after I got through the process of finally finishing the application, it was probably the beginning of senior year, I want to say that I finished it. I submitted that and then took a few months, took a few months for them to review all the applications. I think I applied to like six schools and I unfortunately didn't get in, like, in right off the bat. But um, in July of 2015, after I had graduated New Paltz, I got in off the wait list to Colorado State University. So it was, <laughs> kind of not knowing for a few months what I was going to do, if I was going to get in or not, but it did happen. And, you know, a lot of people don't get in their first try. So I got really lucky. But um, a lot of my friends, you know, it, it can take a few times to get in. There's just so many applications in very few spots. So, um, you know, don't be discouraged. You know, I wasn't discouraged. I was like, I'm just going to try again. It's just kind of the way it goes. Yeah. yeah. So what did you do in that time? Um, mm -hmm. Was it a year? It was, you know? it was only the summer because I did get in off the wait list. But if I wasn't going to get in, if I had to reapply, um, I was just going to try to find some different opportunities, maybe like work. I did actually, I did get a job at an animal hospital as a technician because I didn't think I was going to get into school. So I got a job at um, Bullville Animal Hospital near Pine Bush working as a technician there. And I was, you know, I was planning on working there for at least a year to reapply. But, um, you know, I just wanted to start getting more experience. So 
or sometimes people, if they don't get into vet school, go and do a master's program, and then they have, you know, more um, education under their belt, and that, you know, looks good on a on a application. What would they get their master's in? Just curious. Um, anything really. I knew people. My friend had a master's in physiology. I knew okay. people who had masters in anatomy. Um, some people went and got MBAs. So it was kind of all over the board. We had a yeah. very diverse group of vet school students. We had people who were Spanish majors who also did science, you know, all the science curriculum. Mm -hmm. and it was really, it's very diverse. You come, I had um, mm -hmm. a friend who was a computer science major who worked in the field for a while who came back to vet school. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very diverse. A lot of different people do a lot of different things before they you know, choose to go and do a whole nother educational path. Yeah, 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 that's great. And thank you for sharing. I, it's so important for students to realize that if they don't get in, use that year to get more experience. And the experience is invaluable, but also it makes you a stronger candidate for next totally. time. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's not the worst thing. And, you know, look, you might not get in and then go and do something else and go be like, oh my gosh, I like this way more. You might figure it out that that's, you want to do something different. So it's not like, you know, I thought at first, I was like, oh my God, like this is terrible. But, you know, if it did happen that way, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if I had to go out and, you know, do something else. Right, right. right. So, you know, going on off of that, I know you had shared that um, you did some exploration in terms of different animal populations that you wanted to serve and could you talk about that process a little bit and the exploration sure um i grew up riding horses and my family has horses so i always thought that i wanted to work with horses in equine medicine so i geared my education at csu towards that and then it just i went into the field and it just wasn't for me it was really, really long hours, being up in the middle of the night, driving cars, and you know, I just couldn't handle it. Like, my body just couldn't take it. And emotionally, it wasn't good for me. And I identified that and you know, said, I just I need to change. It was heartbreaking. But, you know, it was in the long term, it'll be better because now we work on small animal, which doesn't have as crazy hours. And it's not quite as stressful as what working with horses was. I mean, I always have the opportunity to, but you know, I have such a good education and skills that if I want to go back ever and work with horses again, I could. Right. right. Yeah. And also you still ride when you can, yeah. right? Is that something you do? I haven't done it in a while, but yeah, theoretically, yes, I can. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just a good way. Sometimes you can keep an interest yeah. in your life, even if it's not in your exact career and you're still working with animals. Totally. So would you be able to kind of share what in, I don't know, a normal day, what you do day in, day out? Yeah, so um, <laughs> I'm kind of give you my schedule of a day. I usually get in around 8, 830 and then I see appointments. So we see wellness appointments. So animals that are just in for just a general physical exam, vaccines, blood work. Um, maybe they have some ongoing issues that we're going to talk about, but that's more like just like a wellness checkup on them. And then you have appointments that are sick. So you have animals that, um, you know, a classic cat, issue is vomiting you know a lot of people bring their cats in for throwing up so that would be like a common cat thing or we have animals that get hurt they you know have are limping or something like that and the animal's not eating so we see sick appointments and then on some days i'll do surgery so we do a lot of spay and neuter um and then you know a lot of like dental cleanings mass removals and you know sometimes you get, get in a, like an exploratory surgery if an animal eats something you gotta try to go find it so it can be all over the board yeah yeah great it's, it was so rewarding I'm guessing it's rewarding yeah I think um especially like when people are super appreciative of like you know of you helping their animal and you see how much how special the animal is to somebody it's very rewarding yeah yeah um just going to jump around, um, what, what would 
you say is a, a challenge or obstacle that um, maybe you face? It could be, you know, in, in the actual job now or, you know, just a challenge. A challenge. Um, let's see. I'm trying to phrase this right. I think it's really hard to convey to people that their animals need like basic yearly care. Um, you know, cause just like us, you're like, oh, I feel fine. There's nothing wrong with me, but you know, it's still good to go get a checkup. Like I neglected myself for a while and hadn't been to a doctor. And then, you know, it was like, oh, you know, I turned 30. Maybe I I should go get blood work and, you know, a physical exam. I think it's important, you know, for people and animals to like keep up with your health and cause you just don't know, you know, what could be going on below the surface and animals can't tell you that they don't feel good, you know. And it's better to catch it early. That's, that's what a lot of people don't understand. It's better to catch it early or just use preventative medicine. You know, vaccines mm -hmm. are a way of their disease control, preventative medicine, in dogs, heartworm medication and flea and tick prevention. You know, those are preventions that are needed in our areas. Um, teeth but also, cleaning. What was that? Teeth, teeth cleaning. Cleaning, yes. Um, same thing with people. If you have like not good dental health, it can affect your heart, your kidneys, yeah. like all different things, the bacteria. So dental cleanings are important, yeah. Lexi has to come in for her. She'll be in soon. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's funny. <laughs> okay. So can you tell me and us some of the skills that you use that you kind of had to develop on the job, like maybe um, any like organizational paperwork or recording, reporting notes, things like that? Um, yeah, I mean, you definitely have record keeping. Every hospital is different because they all use different services, uh, sorry, not services, but computer programming. So it's all <laughs> different. But um, I think like the two biggest things to me in vet med are clinical reasoning, where, you know, you have to work up a case, you have to look at your patient, what's going on, diagnosing it, and then, you know, treating it. So you have this whole clinical reasoning you know, algorithm that you have to go through in your brain. Um, I think my vet school did a really good job of teaching that, but I think that's also something that you have to develop. Um, and the other thing is communicating with clients um, is a big one, communication. Um, I think something that sometimes I forget is, you know, people don't know necessarily, some people don't know anything about, you know, um, like an animal's, you know, a body. They don't know about, you know, kidney disease or something. And I kind of, you know, will jump the gun and just like start telling them things and I have to go back and explain it, you know, because it's just not common knowledge. Um, you know, unless you're in that field or you have your own health issues, not everybody knows about, you know, stuff. So you have to kind of go and slow down and take two steps back and explain it out to them in baby steps which I think is good for you too, because you get to review like information to explain to somebody. Yeah, so there's a lot of educating of- A lot of educating. The owner. Just how to communicate with different people. Everyone's communication method is different. And also I'm thinking like you deal with um, the owners that are really stressed out and upset. Mm -hmm. So it's a different, you know, you're explaining things when maybe they are you know more emotional or it could be it's a challenge to convey the information so it's another skill yeah absolutely um and my vet school did a lot of like client role playing to try to learn how to talk to different people and different skills that you can use to you know speak with somebody like pausing so you know you give somebody a huge amount of information People can't absorb that and you don't realize it. So like learning to pause and give segments at a time or ask somebody, hey, is it okay if I, you know, talk about this? Um, a big one is like euthanasia when you have to put someone's pet to sleep, you know, talking to them, be like, hey, is it okay if I talk about this process? Is it okay if, you know, I proceed with this? Like 
just so that people are really, you know, you're really clear with them and you're letting them give you permission to, you know, to make them feel part of it and included. Yeah, thank you for that. I, you know, these are some of the skills that you're building even in your, your job, your retail job, yeah. your any customer service that, of course, you know, the specialized training is so critical, but those that's a skill you can develop um, even in your classes, mm -hmm. when you're in school, asking questions, um, being an engaged learner. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, did you, do, while you were in school, did you do any shadowing of a veterinarian, or can you tell me about that, okay. or not really? I did a lot before I was in school as ways to get um, experience to put on a vet school application. So I um, used to volunteer with an equine vet and some small animal vets, and I would shadow them a lot. Um, when I was in vet school, I didn't really have time to shadow, but you're also immersed in everything anyways. And right. then I think my first summer of vet school, I got a job working at a racetrack, a horse racetrack in, um, in Colorado. And I worked in the test barn. So we like took blood and urine from the horses for drug testing um, for the state. So I did that. And then when I got into my third, third summer going into fourth year of vet school, we had to do externships. So I had to go and spend like two weeks at a time at different vet clinics um, and shadowing and helping and stuff like that to gain skills. Great, great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, for, you know what I'm thinking, you mentioned uh, like a vet tech. Mm -hmm. What would be the, the training for that? Um, so some hospitals um, will have, like my hospital, we have licensed technicians, we have assistants. So I was probably more an assist, I was more, I was an assistant when I had started my job um, in between graduating and going to vet school. Um, and so assistants are people that can help hold animals, they can help um, administer vaccines, they can do things um, you know, at a more basic level, but they're integral still to the practice. Licensed technicians go to school. Um, and a lot of community colleges have uh, technician schools. So in te licensed technicians learn about anesthesia they learn about different diseases um, they can do more in a practice setting they can you know run the anesthesia they can place catheters they can do a little bit more than what an, a lot more than what an assistant can they have a lot of knowledge behind themselves okay. but I think this um, does Ulster County do have a tech program do you know I'm not sure. Um, I'm really not sure, but I, I'm going to check on that because yeah, it's good to let students know. College might have one. Um, but yeah, the tech programs are usually like a few years and mm -hmm. they're really great. I've known like a lot of great, you know, technicians who come out of tech programs and they're really, really yeah. uh, great at what they do. Yeah. Can I just ask, how long was vet school? Uh, four years. Okay. Yeah, and then I did a one-year internship afterwards, which wasn't mandatory. It was something I could choose to do. Yeah, okay, okay great. Yeah. So I'm just trying to see, is there anything else that you'd like to share with students, or you've really shared so much, and this was, um, this was so great and educational? I guess I have one more thing. My boyfriend and I were <laughs> talking about this. Um, just, you know, both of us were looking back in retrospect at our careers and our lives, and, like, I think it's really hard when you're young you feel really desperate to get a job or to do something like don't do things out of being desperate. Yeah. I think like I took my internship out of being desperate because I didn't feel like I, I didn't, you know, know if I was going to get a, another internship if one was going to pop up. So I took it and it just wasn't like a great fit for me or I've taken jobs where I think my first job out of my internship, the pandemic had just started. So there weren't a lot of jobs where I wanted to practice in like the Northeast. So I took a job kind of like, cause I felt desperate and it just didn't work out. So like give things time, be willing to be patient and you know, some the right thing will come along and just make sure it's right for you. 
That's great advice. And you're right. Before you get experience and you are, you can feel that way. So that's great to kind of check in with yourself and realize it's, it's a normal part of the process. Yeah. And also, Easier to see. Like, if something's not that. working out, like if you go to a job and it's not working out, don't be afraid to leave, you know, because you got to do what's best for you right. to grow and to be happy. Like I've definitely have left jobs where I'm just like, this is not for me and I got to move on and do something that's more conducive for myself. Like, don't be afraid. Cause I know people who get stuck at jobs for years, hating them. Yeah. It's not working. And, yeah, and as long as you leave professionally yeah. and, and give notice, then you can get a reference. Absolutely. As long as you stay professional, you know, I've always like left professionally, like you, you just stay professional and you know, you do the right thing. As long as you do the right thing, you know, you don't just walk out, <laughs> but be professional about it. And you know what? People will respect you for being professional and appreciate it. And like you said, they'll still be your friend. They'll still give you a reference. You know, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so, so much. This was well, great. I'm going to send you, are you on the orange and blue network, the alumni so. network? I think I am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can check and then just send you um, a link. That's a good way if students are interested in reaching out in some way that they can connect okay. with you. It's a system, so you would connect through the system if, if you're up for that because um, you have so much experience and just great advice to share and advice that would, you know, kind of go across industries. So, um, but, you know, it would be students interested in, in being a veterinarian maybe. Yeah. Um, so thank you again. Have a great day. You're welcome. And have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.